Hello friends, and today I'd like to share a few ways that you can add and use references with OpenTunes and to Homer 2D. And this follows on from my video last week where I shared five drawing tips that I've picked up to help new artists and animators. And this was the first of those tips. So if you missed that video, you can watch it by following the card above or follow the link in the description. And in that video, I discussed how using reference is vital for drawing accurately especially for newer artists. And in this video, I'd like to show a few ways that you can use image references. And we'll look at video reference another time. So first, where do you get your references from? Well, they can be anywhere, from books that you have, films and TV that you watch, from the internet, like Google searches or social media, or from real life. Taking your own camera outside to take photos or video reference it's probably one of the best references you can get because you can get exactly what you need the right subject, the right angles and the right lighting and with videos being particularly important for animation but finding reference isn't today's topic it's how you view it and how to bring it into OpenTunes or to Homer 2D so there's a number of ways you can see your references and the simplest is just to view it in the file explorer or you can open it up in a different program and have that window nearby as you draw. And if you've got an extra monitor, it can be really useful to have your references on a second monitor with your art or animation program on the main one. And if you've got lots of images, you can open them all up in separate windows like this or use a program like PureRef. And this allows you to show lots of images at once. And you can add them from your local computer, as we've got here, or you can drag and drop them from web pages, which is where this application really comes into its own. So you can quickly build together a tapestry of images. But if you want to know more about this program, just drop me a message in the comments below. Alternatively, you can add the images directly into OpenTunes or to Homer, and there's two ways to do this. Either by using the colour model window, or adding them directly into the viewer. I've covered using the colour model before, so I won't go into detail here, but I'll add a link to it in the description. And if you're not familiar with it, you open the colour model panel from the Panels menu in Tahoma, or from the Windows menu in OpenTunes. And there's lots of ways to use it, but the simplest way I'd suggest is to start a new level. And any type will do, but because adding the image will add colours to your palette when you load it, and a standard raster palette is shared between all levels, I'd suggest that you don't choose the standard raster level. So instead, I'll create a Toons raster level here, and I'll use this level only for references. So now I've got a level, I can right-click on the colour model window and choose Load Colour Model. Then browse to your image and select it, and then click Load, and it'll ask if you want to import the colours to the palette, so that's fine. So now you've got a floating window with your reference image in it, and you can place them anywhere you like. And you can pan and zoom, using the normal controls, to focus on the area that you're interested in. And the second way to bring reference into the programme is to drag and drop them into your scene. So for this you have to have the images saved on disk again, and then you simply drag and drop them into the viewer when your scene is open. And when you do, either choose Import to take a copy of the image into your project folder, or Load to load it from the location you dropped it from. And this choice is important because OpenTunes will look in this same location when you reopen the scene later. So to allow me to delete the original from this download location, I'll choose Import and then simply change to the Animate tool and then move it to somewhere appropriate on screen near the viewer. And because you're using the Animate tool, it can be outside of the camera view. And you can use the Scale tool to resize it. And because you'll probably want to move it and resize it at the same time, I like to use the All option. And that allows me to drag to move the drawing and then using the bottom corner here 
I can resize the image at the same time. And I'd suggest hiding the image from the final render so if it overlaps the camera view, it won't be rendered out with your animation. And to do that, just press the I button at the top of the column here. So drag any of the reference images into the program and place them in appropriate positions. And if you don't want the full image, or if the image has some background, here's a quick tip for you. Simply switch to the selection tool, choose the appropriate mode, I'll choose freehand here, and then draw a selection around the part of the image that you want to keep. Then choose the keyboard shortcut for copy, and on Windows that's Ctrl and C. Move to the following frame, and then paste the image, so on Windows again, that's Control V. And now you'll have just this small piece of the drawing. So then we just delete the original, and then move the smaller piece to where you want it. And it's tempting to use the eraser on the first drawing that you import, but that won't work. So using the selection tool is the best way to reduce the size of the image. So once you've got your image, it's only shown in a single frame, so you might want to extend the exposure of that image if you need it for a few frames while animating. So simply highlight the images and then click and drag this drag handle. And then as you work through your animation, you've still got the three references visible. And once you're happy where the images are on screen, then click the padlock on each column. And then you can't accidentally move or edit it. And be sure to click to your drawing frame and start drawing. And using this drag and drop importing technique is good when you have your images saved to disk locally. But if you're looking through social media or Google image search, saving each image locally before it's used is really, really time consuming. But there's a better way to do it into Homer 2D. And the third way to bring images into the program is available only into Homer 2D. And that's to use your computer's buffer using copy and paste. And this is particularly useful when browsing the internet for images, because sometimes you can't download an image, or the links take you to a page that you don't want. And I'm doing this on a PC, so there will be other shortcut keys for other systems, but for Windows, there's three ways to copy the image. First, you can just press the print screen button on your keyboard, and your whole screen will be copied to the clipboard. Or, you can hold Alt and press print screen, and then only the current window will be copied, and this is useful to resize your window to show only the image you're interested in. And finally, and this is my favourite, there's the snipping tool on Windows. So if you find an image that you want to copy first, find the larger version of it, and then hold the Windows key, hold Shift, and then press S, and the whole screen goes dark, and now we're in snipping image mode. And there's two main options here for snipping, that's rectangular snipping and freehand mode. So to snip a rectangle, you simply click and drag over the area that you're interested in. And when you release, that's now copied into the buffer. And you can then click the shortcut at the bottom right to edit it, or simply go to Tahoma 2D, click in a blank frame and press Ctrl V to paste. And this creates a level of the same size as the image you've copied. And if you leave a gap of any size between drawings and select another cell, you can paste another image to create a new level there of that size. But if you paste in the cell directly after a drawing, Tahoma will give you the choice to paste into a new drawing in this level or create a new level. Let me show you. So again, Windows key, Shift and S. This time I'll choose the freehand mode and now we can draw a freehand line any shape around the character you want to cut. That's now copied. And then if we go to Tahoma and choose Paste, it'll ask me to paste in place in the current drawing or create a new level. So I'll choose to create a new level each time. And now it's pasted only what we copied. And once you've got your image, use the Animate tool to resize and position it
and then again extending the drawing and locking the column. So I hope you found these tips useful and if you want more like this subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to be notified when I release more tips videos. And add a comment down below if you've got any other reference tips you'd like to share with the rest of us. So be sure to use reference when you draw and animate and you've got plenty of choices of how to do so. Try them all out and see which works for you. One of them certainly will. And that's a guarantee. Have you always wanted to animate but didn't know how to start and software seemed expensive and difficult to use? Well with OpenToons it's free, powerful and once you know how it's easy to use. And it's my mission to get you animating with it today. Hi, my name's Darren and I've been teaching OpenToons for the past three years, showing thousands of students just like you how easy it is to animate with and cutting through the jargon to show that anyone can animate with it. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to animate traditionally using OpenToons. And the course is designed for students brand new to OpenToons, as well as those new to animation. So take a look at the free lessons I've offered below, and then why not sign up and join me animating traditionally with OpenToons.